Thursday season. That was wonderful. It is now time for the sermon. It will be taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 4 through 23. I would now like to call on Reverend Dr. Theopolis Lambo. sleeping at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we are of the day, let us be sober. Having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and as element, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another, just as you also are doing. Yeah. But we request of you, brethren, that you appreciate those who did diligently labor among us yes. and have charge over you in the Lord and give you yeah. instruction. And that you esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Live in peace with one another. We all do, brethren. Admonish the unruly. Encourage the faint hearted. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. See that no one repays another with evil. For evil, but always seek after that which is good for one another and for all people. Amen. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. But examine everything carefully. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now, 
May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete, without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The thing for this morning is divine grace. Divine grace. Grace is a gift of the Almighty God from which we receive mercy, forgiveness, loving kindness, and salvation of our life. It is because of God's grace that the Lord addresses all our indifferent attitudes towards Him and our rebellious hearts. Despite all the good things that the Lord lavishes on us every day, which we do not deserve. For example, if we look around us and think back how many brethren started the year 2012 with us in this church, in our community, or those we know, how many are still around today and still marching forward as onward Christians? Not all. Some have fallen by the wayside into the wilderness of the world, some have backslide into the abyss of darkness and confusion with no clue whatsoever about their life. We that are here today still making progress. Yes. Despite all our ups and downs and series of crises and storms of life, we have survived. We still retain our sanity. How many of us have ever sat down and meditated or think? how we were able to do it. I am certain none of us will ever say that it is because we are clever or we are lucky or better than anyone else, but that it is by God's grace. God is so gracious. That he has unlimited capabilities to forgive our sins and bless us. We have heard of divine grace. The doctrine of divine grace is the pillar upon which the Old Testament and the New Testament is based. In the Old Testament, divine grace was being anticipated, being made ready for its full expression in the New Testament. It is in the New Testament that we really understand and appreciate the gift of divine grace. In the Old Testament, as we read in Exodus 34, 6, God revealed himself as a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. This knowledge of our God affords us, on the serving sinners, the privilege to be able to approach God with prayer. And he said, if now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us, for it is a stiff naked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for thy inheritance. As we read in Exodus 34, 9. Through grace, God removed us from all our sinful states, which had separated us from the love of God, into full acceptance that opens the way for reconciliation and redemption. God's divine grace was already at work during man fall in the Garden of Eden. Even in our state of disobedience to God, He did not condemn us to destruction. But through His grace, He gave us another chance of life, as we read in Genesis 3, 21-24. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, that the Lord God made coats of skins, and clothed them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. 
So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. God's call to Abraham was another testimony of God's divine grace. God had compassion on humanity when he saw how we were suffering and languishing under the yoke of his curses upon us. Because of the disobedience of our father Abraham, um, Adam and Eve, and he had to execute his second master plan to redeem humanity from the slavery of sin, into which Satan, the deceiver, had put us. God found righteousness in Father Abraham, even within the sinful and idol-worshipping community in which he was stayed. And God said in Genesis 12, 1-4, Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of that country, and from that kindred, and from that father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. And Lord went with him, and Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of here. God's call to Abraham was an extension of grace to all humanity. Through grace, he renamed him Abraham, from whom all nations of the world will be blessed. The blessings God offered to Abraham's descendants will be instrumental in bringing about a universal blessing to all families of the earth. Amen. This blessing finds expression in a God-given covenant, the object of which is to extend God's grace to the whole of human race. In a solemn confirmation of the promise to Abraham, God affirmed, My covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations and I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your descendants after you, throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant. Amen. As we read in Genesis 17, 4 and 7. Because of grace, this promise was applicable to all Abraham's offspring, not only his racial descendants, the Jews, but also to his spiritual descendants, believers from all nations, as we read from Romans 4, 16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. It was God's plan for redeeming all believers from all nations. In extending his grace to Abraham, God was establishing the beginning of the church, the community of grace. Amen. The specific blessings of Abraham and his receiving of God's grace provides a model for the selection of individuals used by God in the history of redemption. In the gracious dealings of God with Israel, God was laying the basis for his outreach of grace to the universal church. God's gracious intervention in the old covenant that is before Jesus. We are intended to reveal the role of the church in his plan for redeeming the world. The prophets of the Old Testament we are not merely serving themselves or their contemporaries, but they are serving the church. You may wonder, were there churches in the Old Testament? God started the super plan of redemption a long time as we read in 1 Peter 1, 10 to 12. It reads, as to this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that will come to you made careful searches and inquiries, seeking to know what person or time the Spirit of Christ within them was indicating. As he predicted the suffering of Christ and the glories to follow, it was revealed to them 
that they were not serving themselves, but you, in these things which now have been announced to you, through those who preach the gospel to you, by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. <coughs> the institutions of the old covenant had only a temporary form of God's grace. The ultimate expression of that grace came in the New Testament when Jesus